this video, I'm going to give you guys a practicable approach to developing a solo using motifs. A motif is essentially a short melodic or rhythmic passage that's used to develop a longer passage, or in this case a solo. I like to think of it as like the main idea or center point of my solo. So these exercises I'm about to show you are beneficial for everyone, but they're probably going to be most digestible for those of you who have a little bit of experience playing over different chord changes, or at least have a general understanding of which notes fit over which chords. That being said, I think whatever level you're at, it's a great concept to study. It's helped me take my playing to the next level. It gave me like a good framework for how to improve my improvising. You know, it's one thing to just say, okay, go practice improvising and then have no idea where to start. So this gives you a very specific way to sort of tackle that. All right, let's get into it. To demonstrate this exercise, I'm gonna use the first four chords of the jazz standard, All the Things You Are. So those chords are F minor seven, B flat minor seven, E flat seven, and A flat major seven. One thing to note is that all these chords are within the key of A flat major, so we're just gonna be thinking mainly A flat major scale, okay? Let's just start with that first chord, F minor seven. So step one is to choose a melodic motif. So I'm gonna choose three notes. You can choose two, you can choose more than three. I find that three is sort of the sweet spot for this, especially when you're beginning. So I'm gonna choose these three notes right here, B flat, C, and F, in that order. I know that the three of those notes fit within F minor seven, so those are good notes to choose. Okay, step two is to take a second to analyze what is going on intervolically with this phrase. In other words, how far away are these notes from each other, or what exactly are they doing? In this case, I'm going up a whole step from my starting note, so my starting note being B flat, I'm going up a whole step to C, and then across a fourth from C. So I can think of this motif as a whole step and then a fourth. It also really helps to be able to visualize that on the guitar, so visualize that shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play an F minor, and I'm just gonna go through and play that same shape that I chose, that whole step and then a fourth. I'm gonna find different places where that shape or that same set of intervals fits over F minor seven. So different starting notes, right? We're not always gonna start on B flat. This is what that sounds like. I just played there is within the A flat major scale, which is also, by the way, the same thing as an F natural minor scale. So you can think of it as either one of those. So if you want a really exact way of finding all the spots where that shape works, I would just start on each note of that scale and see if that shape still works uh, starting from each of those notes. So let's do that for a second and I'll show you some examples of things that don't work. So F minor, if I start on F, that one works, all those notes are within the scale. If I start on that second note in an F natural minor, suddenly, yes, that first note is within the scale, but the A and the D are not within the scale. So that one doesn't work right there. This next one, that works, the next one works. The next one after that, in this case, it's not gonna work because we're doing natural minor, and this would include A natural six, which is not in the natural minor scale. Next one works, and then that one works as well. Step three is taking the motif through a set of chord changes. So now I'm gonna bring in B flat minor seven, which is my next chord in this chord progression. And I'm gonna play this motif throughout both those chords. So I'm gonna loop one measure of F minor seven and one measure of B flat minor seven and show you what that sounds like. Also keep in mind, I'm keeping it rhythmically fairly simple. We mainly just wanna focus on the melodic aspect of this motif for now. We'll get into the rhythm stuff later. If you wanna just do eighth notes, that's a great way to start. All right, here we go. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to add in my last two chords. So I'm going to add in E flat 7 and A flat major 7, one measure of each chord. And again, I'm just sticking to that same motif of going up a whole step and then up a fourth. Another thing to note is that an A flat major scale fits over all these chords, but you can also use notes from other scales that you know will work over those chords. So in this example, over the E flat 7, I might throw in some notes from the E flat altered scale. All right, here we go.
Step four is variation. So this step is where the exercise sort of branches off into a couple sub exercises. But the main idea of this exercise is that we're gonna start messing with the motif a little bit. So we can do that by changing the order of the notes, still maintaining the same shape, but changing the order, changing the rhythm of the notes, displacing the motif, or changing the octave of one or more of the notes in the phrase. This one's gonna change the sound of the motif quite a bit, but it's a cool way to branch off into other ideas. So I'm still gonna use those same four chords, F minor seven, B flat minor seven, E flat seven, and A flat major seven. But now I'm gonna go through each of those variations and show you what they sound like. So the first one, changing the order of the notes. Let's go back to our original motif, which was this here. If I just change the order of those notes, but maintain that same shape, I could do this. Go. Notice I'm still maintaining the same distance between those notes. I'm just changing the order in which I play them. So let's see what that sounds like going through those four chords. focus on changing the rhythm of that motif. So instead of just eighth notes, I might throw in some triplets, some sixteenth notes, whatever it is. try displacing the motif. So this is a very strict way of sort of forcing yourself to play the motif with a different feel. So you may say, I'm going to play this motif always on beat one, right? It's always going to sound the same. Now let's say you started the motif on the end of one, so the off beat. Now it's going to have a slightly different feel. If we're just focusing on eighth notes, so like one and two and three and four and, not talking about like one e and a two e and a three and a four, not talking about sixteenth notes, triplets or anything. If we were to just play the phrase in eighth notes and displace that phrase, we could go through that set of chord changes, play it on beat one the first time. The next measure, we play it on the end of one. The measure after that, we play it on beat two. The measure after that, we play it on the end of two, and so on until we get back to beat one. So here's what that sounds like. <laughs> Last one, changing the octave of one or more of the notes in this phrase. Let's go back to our motif. So if I take that second note, the C, and bring it up an octave, that's gonna sound like this now. Sounds pretty different, but it's kind of a cool effect. Over F minor seven. This one's pretty difficult to do, but I'm gonna try it over these chord changes. solo, you're going to be combining a lot of these methods of variation. You're going to be mixing up the order of notes, the rhythm, but you can also actively practice that. So you can combine a couple of these methods into one practice routine. So I'm going to try that right now. I'm going to combine mixing the order of notes and changing up the rhythm. Let's see what that sounds like.
right, so step five, the final step. This is my favorite step. This step also can be broken into two subcategories. So in this step, we're gonna get a little bit less strict. Up until now, we've been very strict with maintaining that same interval movement, except when we did the whole octave switching thing, but that's a little different. So you can think of this part of the exercise as more of like the application part. This is when we start to really get into the improvising side of things and bring in maybe some of your own ideas into this exercise. So subcategory one would be that we are going to allow ourselves to alter the motif slightly in order to fit a certain part of the scale or in order to fit over the chord. So if I'm playing over F minor seven here, and let's say I'm up here playing that motif and then I get here and I wanna play the motif starting here, but I know that this is not gonna work. Right, that gives me a major third and a major six. What I'm gonna now allow myself to do is bring those two notes down to actually fit within the scale. So I'm still moving up like one degree of the scale, and then that is across a fourth from the second note. So now, now I can take that through the scale and have a little bit more freedom and fill in those gaps where I couldn't otherwise play that idea. So let's see what that sounds like in context of those first four chords of all the things you are again. Subcategory two is that we are going to add other notes or ideas in between playing the motif. These added ideas can be anything. It doesn't have to follow a real specific set of rules. I just like to pick notes that I know fit over that chord. You know, you could pick pentatonic scale ideas, just the regular major scale or minor scale, whatever you're on, arpeggios, chromatic notes, and closures, as long as we're still using that motif to guide the solo. So this is where you start to get a little bit loose, add in maybe some of your own flavor to this. Let's see what that sounds like over those four chords again. step four, you can take these two subcategories of step five and combine them. This is where you can start to sort of disguise your motif while still allowing it to guide your solo. Another thing to note is that you can be as strict or as loose as you want at this point in the exercise. Really the main point of this part is just to try to apply the motif in a more realistic setting. So that's the exercise. You can take any set of notes you want and run it through the same procedure. I'm sure you'll come up with some cool things. What I found is that in addition to teaching me how to better develop a solo, it's also forced me to find ideas that I normally wouldn't play had I not had this strict set of rules to follow and like a specific idea to really take through all the variations possible. It just opens up a lot of doors. So even though this is an exercise, I would recommend trying this next time.
time you have the opportunity to improvise, even just loosely trying to base your solo over a main idea, uh, whether it's a melodic or rhythmic idea, it can really help you stay grounded and it can improve the memorability, cohesiveness, and clarity of your solo. All right, that's it. I hope you guys all learned something. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you want more videos like this. Also, feel free to ask me any questions and uh, thanks for watching.